Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, in case you can't tell, I'm kind of getting into the spirit of the season. So I decided I wanted to do a build. Now, I've only got about three weeks until December 1st. I want to build a Telecaster. I chose a Telecaster because I have templates for it. It's a relatively easy build, an absolutely legit instrument, beautiful, plays great. So this, this is what I want to go for. However, I realized that I'm going to have to set some ground rules for myself. The first rule is no binding. The reason for that is, is that binding can be pretty time intensive and depending on your, um, your order of operations, like that can be more or less true. So I want to go without the binding. I love a double bound Telecaster. It is pretty much my favorite way to see a telly, but not every telly has to be double bound. So we're gonna do some really nice roundovers and skip the binding. The second rule is no comfort carve. It's not gonna be a belly carve. There's not gonna be an arm carve. And in all likelihood, I'm probably not gonna do a neck heel carve. I'm still on the fence about that. I haven't dedicated myself one way or the other. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be going with the standard routes, standard scale length, standard headstock, pretty much a, a standard telly. Uh, the one thing that I won't have on it is there's not gonna be a pit guard. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want the finish to show through and because I have what I think is a really neat way to mount the neck pickup, so no pit guard. Some of the metallic flake I'll be working with. We got a red and a green. We got a chrome metal flake. We got some beautiful ice ice pearl. So those are gonna form the basis of the, the finish I'm gonna do. I'm gonna try some really neat things with it. By far, the most time consuming part of this build is gonna be the finish, I already know that. And that's why it's important that I keep everything else simple so that I can just bang it out and get straight to the part that I know is gonna take a little time, might have to have a redo or two until I get it just right. The pickups I want, I bought from Q Pickups out of Croatia and with international shipping being what it is combined with the time of season there's there's a chance they're not going to show up i really wanted these because this person was one of the few that were winding with white bobbins however i have a backup plan in case those pickups don't show up on time but fingers crossed i'm really hoping that they will uh with all that said that's that's it that's that's what we're doing and uh let's go ahead and get started all right gonna start off with some eight quarter poplar and dimensional maple as you can see, I already started to flatten this piece of poplar. Uh, what I'm going to do is run it through the jointer and get a nice flat 90 degree surface to what I already worked on, which will allow me to use that as a reference face while I run it through my bandsaw. The bandsaw will take off the vast majority of the material, which will save me a lot of time. As you can see here, it took off a pretty big chunk, which would take forever to try and sand through. I'm not quite to one and three quarters, and I want the two faces to be perfectly parallel to one another. So it goes through the drum sander many times until I've got the surfaces that I'm looking for. And right about 1.75 inches. Next, I trace the template onto the piece so I've got some lines to line the tape up on. Then use the super glue masking tape trick and take it to the shopsmith bandsaw. I use this one for cutting this because with the quarter inch blade it's much better for curves and it has no problem plowing through the eight quarter inch poplar. Drill out the neck screw holes and here I started to drill these and then suddenly realized that I was putting the ferrule holes on the wrong side of the body. This is my first use of my new infinity bit, and I'm pretty happy with how it went. Gave a pretty nice smooth surface. And I'm going to mark the center lines, and that will allow me to easily attach the second template so I can route out the neck pocket, pick up pockets and the control cavity. This is the pin router setup and I'm using a half inch upcut bit and then I can start in on the pickup cavities. And finally the control cavity. 
Then I need to drill a connection between the neck and bridge pocket, as well as a connection between the bridge and control cavity. I'm using the laser level here to line up my center line to make sure I've got the pieces exactly where I want them. And then I use a brad bit as an awl to mark and pre-drill the holes. And then I can go ahead and install the hardware. Now I do this before finishing to make sure that everything is where it needs to be before I've gone through the effort of doing finish. and also so that uh, the holes are pre-drilled and ready to go once I'm done with the finish work, which makes assembly much simpler. And go ahead and mark and drill out the strap button holes as well. And now I'm drilling out the string pass-through. And finally, after removing the hardware, I can drill out those ferrule holes on the correct side of the body. And here you can see it turned out pretty good. Then I need to drill out the indents for the cup washers. And go ahead and clean up the outside edge where there were still some saw marks from the bandsaw. Then gonna Sand the whole thing with several grits of sandpaper, just to make sure I got a nice surface to work with. Here I corrected an issue on the side of the neck pocket, and using a quarter inch roundover bit, went over both sides just to give the whole thing a nice roundover. And lastly, drill out the jack hole. Finished the body, uh, wasn't without its hiccups. Obviously I began to drill the ferrules on the wrong side. Uh, thank goodness we're using a Telecaster bridge plate, which will cover that up. So got lucky on that one. That actually brings me to an issue I have with my templates. All of them were made for uh, plunge routing with a, a bit with a guide bearing on it. Uh, obviously, since I'm doing pin routing, that doesn't really work for me. So I need to consider taking my templates and reworking them into a form that makes sense for the pin routing. Also, I got to use this beast for the first time. Uh, this is an infinity bit. Um, previously, wow, one of the blades is chipped. So I've used it one time on poplar. Certainly didn't have any metal in it. I didn't check it before I used it. It may have came that way. Fortunately, the chip is in the same path as the tips of the other blades. So I didn't see that when I was routing. And that makes it a little harder to talk positively about this, but... Uh, Ultimately, I am very happy with this. Uh, previously, when I've attempted to route the entire 2-inch edge, or 1.75-inch edge, of a body, uh, I have had it rip the body out of my hand and throw it across the garage and break it against my workbench. Um, this, because of the way it's set up to cut in, uh, cut up and cut down with these straight cutters, allowed me to route the entire outside in one go. Only issue that I had was this part right here. As I came around this corner, uh, this kind of chipped out. And I mean, the grain does run this way, so a blade cutting this way. Uh, I, I can see how it happened. Nothing a uh, little block sanding didn't take care of. Uh, ultimately, I'm very happy with the edge it gave me and how quickly I was able to route it. Quarter inch roundover went pretty good. Uh, I did decide to stick with the square heel, but once I get the bolts and everything in there, I think that's going to look nice. The body went pretty well. I'm very happy with how it turned out, so let's go ahead and move on to the neck. So I start with cutting some of the maple to length, masking tape and super glue to attach the template, and then cut the long links using my big bandsaw, and then I go ahead and switch over to the shopsmith bandsaw to cut out the tighter corners. I'm going to square it up on the router table and drill out the tuner holes. Attach a truss rod template and route out my truss rod channel. I'm going to cut another piece of maple to length and then I will cut it to width and then cut it to thickness, and from this board I was able to get two maple fretboards. 
So I'll go ahead and take those to the joiner, make sure I've got some nice flat surfaces to work with. And then this is actually a radius router bit, uh, which does about 90% of the work of putting a radius on the board. Then I will cut the fret slots using the Stumac fret slot jig and glue it up. Trim it to size on the Shopsmith bandsaw. And here I'm just checking to make sure I got my scale length accurate. And then I'll square it up with a router bit. Then I sand through here to get that curve near the nut so that when I cut the headstock to thickness, that piece just pretty much falls off. Then I'll drill out the truss rod access hole and drill out and put in the threaded inserts for the neck bolts. I'm using a step bit here to drill out the tuner holes to the size that the tuners I have require. And then I do a test fit here and drill out the tiny screw holes. Uh, putting in those screws using a little bit of paste wax is very helpful. And then I'll go ahead and finish radiusing the fretboard using four different grits of sandpaper and the Stumac radius block. The radius I took this to, by the way, was 9.5. Once I was happy with where I had it, I went ahead and did a spot check to make sure that the fretboard thickness was balanced and even throughout. Cleaned it up and did a final check and final sanding so it is ready to go. Then I took it to the Shopsmith bandsaw to cut off a good portion of the back that is definitely material that I will not need. And I used the Shinto rasp to make four indentions that give me an idea of roughly how deep I want to go on the sides. Then I use a 45 degree router bit to hog out the bulk of that material, which saves a lot of time as opposed to trying to rasp or sand it all off. Then Shinto rasp, rasps, and finally sandpaper to get the neck into the shape and feel that I'm looking for. So with the neck and body done, we're ready to move on to the finish. All the products I use are automotive products, and I start with a black base coat on the body, and then mix up some two-part clear with some 4 mil green flake. Then I moved on to the neck where I sprayed a white base coat on the fretboard. Then I masked it off and sprayed a bright red coat over the top of that. And the reveal went really nicely. I waited until the paint was dried to the touch but not completely set and I was really happy with the lines I got. I went ahead and sprayed a couple coats of clear over the top of that just to lock the paint in and help keep everything looking good. Then back to the body, I had issues with the metal flake I had sprayed earlier, and in the meantime I had gotten in some 8mm green metallic flake that I thought looked a lot better in my tests. So I went ahead and sanded back, going to lay down another base coat of black, and then spray the green metal flake over the top. And ultimately, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I think I got a lot better coverage. I used pretty heavy loading here, one and a half grams of flake per ounce of clear, but I think the results speak for themselves. After that it was back to the neck, so I could drop a coat of black for the rest of the neck after I had masked off the fretboard, and then came in with the green metallic flake for the rest of the neck. And went ahead and moved on to the snowflakes. Now here I sprayed a very light coat of the clear and then let it dry till it was tacky. Then I used a makeup brush to sprinkle on the 4 mil chrome flakes, let it set a little longer, and then peel back the stencil to get perfect little chrome snowflakes. After that it was time for several coats of clear for both the body and the neck. I had to lay it on fairly thick here to make sure that those snowflakes were nice and buried and wouldn't come to the surface while doing the sanding and buffing stages. I went in and used a radius block to sand the fretboard and then polished it up with 400 and then 1000. Then I did that same thing to the rest of the neck, level sanding, 400, 1000, and did the same thing to the body. 
Finally, it was time for wet sanding. I start off here with 3000, and after I'd done the entire body and the entire neck in 3000, then I moved on to 5000 and then 7000. Always being sure to change out the water in between grits. And after the 7000, it's looking pretty good. Got a nice mirror shine on there. But then I take it to the buffer with some fine compound, and that really steps it up to the next level. After I had finished both on the fine wheel, then I moved over to the extra fine. And while the effect isn't as dramatic as the fine wheel, it definitely does have an effect. It removes a lot of the fine scratches and spiderweb scratches, giving that perfect mirror finish. So now that the finish is done on both pieces, I go ahead and paint the inside of the cavities with graphite-based paint for EMI protection. Then I need to drill out the holes on the body that have been partially filled in with the clear coats to make sure that the cup washers and grommets fit properly. Tap in the grommets. I need to address a small finish flaw. There's a little bit of burn through there and I don't want to leave it. Now this is just a fun project. If there's some imperfections here or there, I'm not that concerned about it. Uh, I do want to address it and I have a way to do that. My automotive paint and a fine brush. And we're just gonna fill in the spot where it burned through to the wood. There we go. Now I need to go clean this brush out and we'll wait a few minutes for that to dry. And one of the things about a repair like this, it's really helpful if you have the original paint and the original flake or pearl. If you don't have the original stuff and you don't know what was used, it's going to be very difficult. Now we need to apply flake. And the way we're going to do that is I'm going to use super glue. I'm going to use a brush. Makeup brush. And activator. I've done a couple of tests now with this activator and this automotive poly, this does not damage it. So I felt confident in doing that. And one more dab of super glue. This particular glue does self-level a little bit. There we go. All right, and there we go. If you're looking for it, you can see it, but you really got to be looking for it. So now I move on to installing the components on the body. Uh, make sure my ground bridge is in place and then go ahead and solder in the components. Put on the bridge saddles and then I move on to opening up the fret slots which had filled with a certain amount of clear and paint and I found that I had to go ahead and deepen them using the Japanese fret saw. Then I bend some fret wire, tap it in with some wood glue, and trim the ends. Finally, I use the crimson fret file to get a nice bevel on those. Touch them up with some small files. And then cut out some sandpaper for my leveling beam and level the frets. Finally, a Stumac Z file allows me to crown them fairly quickly. And then I use 400 grit sandpaper on a rubber eraser to get a nice round over and touch up the ends with a safety file. Here I'm using various grits of sandpaper around a nylon scratch pad, stepping up the grits as I go and that gets me perfectly round comfortable ends. So I go ahead and switch out my wheel to one dedicated for fret ends with extra fine compound and buff them to a perfect shine in just a couple minutes final assembly of the hardware. And now we're ready to move on to the setup. I use a string spacing ruler to mark out the slots for the strings. And then I cut those slots using a set of nut files. 
After that, I put on a set of 10 to 46 strings and use those to get the action and intonation set up properly. And then the last little touch I wanted to do was to wrap white gaffer tape around the pickups so that they match the theme of the rest of the body. All right, it is finally done. And I have to say, I am pretty damn happy with how it turned out. Uh, this is very close to the vision that I had for this. And uh, you can't always say that. Um, it's been strung up for a couple weeks now. I've been playing it here or there, tweaking it, giving it time to kind of settle in and, uh, you know, reach its optimal state. Uh, it's currently strung with 10 to 46 GHS nickel rockers. Uh, it's a warmer sounding string that I thought was appropriate. Uh, I do like these Q pickups. These are really nice. Uh, they're quarter pounders with the quarter inch uh, magnet in them. This thing turned out freaking awesome. I am really happy with it. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and get some tones out of it so you can hear what it sounds like. Now, I am not a good guitarist, and I'm twice as bad when the camera is on. So I am not going to attempt to play anything, but I will do some chords, some scales, just to, to give you a sense of um, what the, the pickups in this guitar is generally capable of. Uh, I'm running into a Husen Kettner Grandmeister 40. Uh, I've got the pedal board, which you should see now. Currently everything is off. I'm on the clean channel, pretty balanced EQ. So this, this is just the sound of the guitar. Okay, so let's start the bridge pickup, G chord. Yeah. Okay. And then this is the parallel. pretty good. We'll go ahead and move to the neck pickup. Okay. All right. And the final position is these two guys in series. So yeah, I think it sounds pretty fantastic. I'll do a few single notes so you can hear that in a second. Uh, real quick, I wanted to talk about the four-way configuration. I thought it was odd, but uh, this is both of these in series, then the neck, then both in parallel, and then the bridge. Uh, apparently, Baja tellies are set up that way. I've never played one before, so there is some precedent to it, but it took me a second to kind of get used to that. So let's go ahead and see about getting some single notes in here. Uh, we'll go ahead and start at the bridge and uh, I'm gonna throw on the Dispatch Master for just a little classic uh, reverb and delay. That's bridge and then in parallel. And then the neck. I like that a lot, actually. Okay. And then these two in series. Uh, there's definitely a volume boost uh, when you have them in series. The other three positions seem to be pretty balanced, but in series they definitely bump up a little bit. Uh, and let's throw on the Wampler Tumnus and the Orange Compressor. And we'll start back at the bridge and I'll just run a simple minor scale. <laughs>
um, in series. <laughs> I think it sounds fantastic. Uh, it definitely has a really nice uh, harmonic character to it to compress and uh, with the clon to kind of bring that out. Um, just beautiful sounding single coils. Plays great. I'm really happy with the way the neck turned out. I can't feel the line between the um, paint and the metal flake at all. That's completely smooth, which was one of the most important places on the instrument that the paint job uh, you leaves no texture otherwise you're gonna feel it every time you play and you don't and I'm really happy about that um, so yeah turned out pretty great I'm really happy with this um, thank you for sticking around watching the whole video be sure to hit like and subscribe um, it does really help out uh, I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas if that's your thing happy holidays if not and if you don't have anything going on for the next couple of weeks, I hope they're just awesome weeks full of joy and just good times and good luck. So, um, yeah, thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next video. This should be suitably obnoxious, except it's not dramatic, but that's fine. We don't, it's, it's all good. And what's more Xmas than cookies, eh?